Shalom to everyone, to the children of Israel, to the 12 tribes, to the saints of the Most High. Um, I got this book when I found out the truth of who the true Hebrews were. It wasn't enough for me to just know. I felt it was my duty to go in and truly study their history and what they endured. Because I have a, a hard time with those of you with white skin saying, it's in the past. It doesn't matter. So my question to you, white people, is what are you proud of? What are you proud of? I'll say now, denounce the color of your skin, denounce your flesh, and um, I'm going to read some out of this book, it's called Into Egypt Again with Ships, A Message to the Forgotten Israelites, Elisha J. Israel, and I recommend it to anyone who wants the truth of who the true Hebrew Israelites are, and this is an amazing, amazing book. Um, it's only about 150 pages, but it goes into history, it goes into scriptures. Um, so, to those of you with white skin that say slavery doesn't matter, my first question is, if it doesn't matter, why did the white man go through so much trouble to hide who the true chosen are? This nation was founded on bloodshed, murders, lynchings, and I'm going to go in depth because I want you to get a mental image in your head of what these people, the Hebrew Israelites, endured from our race. If you have white skin, you're, you're guilty. Um, it doesn't matter if you don't know your history. And it's time for you to wake up and to repent. And denounce your flesh and stop being proud of your flesh. Flesh and blood's not going to inherit the kingdom. And I'm sure this is going to make a lot of white people mad. I don't really care. The truth is the truth. So, I'm going to start off, take a long, hard look at his back. It was a white man that did that. A white man. So, white people, what are you proud of? You need to stop and look into yourselves, and into your heart, and let go of your pride. There's no need to be proud of who you are. And if you're still proud of who you are after I'm finished with this, there's something wrong with you. Slavery is still relevant. It's still going on. People are still being oppressed. And, um... I'm going to start off by reading page 25. The Holy Bible speaks of a sign that indicates the accurse of Yah. Deuteronomy 21 reads, He that is hanged on a tree is accursed of Yah. And now I'm going to skip down a paragraph. and It's actually... Um, Galatians 3.13 that I'm reading. Yehoshua hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. During the Roman siege of Jerusalem, 66 through 70 AD, the sign of Yah's curse was upon the nation of Israel. The Romans constructed a wall 
around the city and crucified anyone found trying to escape. During the siege, Romans showed no mercy in crucifying as many as 500 Israelites a day. I'm going to skip down some. So, if the accursed of Yah truly are hanged on trees, are not the so-called African Americans also accursed? African Americans have been hanged by the, the thousands in the United States. Between 1882 and 1968, the Tuskegee, Tuskegee Institute recorded 4,743 lynchings in the United States. During this lynching century, the hearts of many African Americans trembled as they lived in fear of being lynched. However, this is omnipresent terror and sadism cannot be conveyed by mere statistics. One of the most poignant personal accounts of lynching in America was written, written by James Cameron, a lynch mob survivor. Cameron writes in his book, A Time of Terror, and that's another one that I encourage you to pick up. Uh, I've ordered it, and hopefully I'll get it soon. <laughs> Cameron writes in his book, A Time of Terror, of the pervasive terrorism's black face, blacks faced. In this chilling memoir, he recalls that even as a young teen, he was fully aware of the savagery involved in lynching. In gory detail, he describes the castration of black men fastened to trees and used as target practice by their assailers. Now, if you want to read up on some true African American history, I've also ordered this book. Um, by a true pioneer and a true woman of courage and why she isn't more well known, I don't know. Her name is Ida B. Wells, an outspoken and fearless voice against the practice of lynching, writes on the practice in one of her numerous reports. Eight Negro Negroes lynched since last I issue of the Free Speech, one at Little Rock, Arkansas last Saturday morning where the citizens broke into the penitentiary and got their man. Three near Anniston, Alabama, one near New Orleans, and three at Clarksville, Georgia. The last three for killing a white man, and five on the same old racket, the new alarm about raping white women. And I'll get to the irony of what they're accused of doing in a minute. I'll get back to that the same program of hanging, then shooting bullets into the lifeless bodies were carried out to the letter. So these people were hung from trees, castrated, sometimes had their fingers cut off to keep them from crawling out of the fire, and then used as target practice. And it's people with this color flesh that did it. Still proud to be white? America is a country in which it is common practice to send the photographs of the lynched and mutilated bodies of blacks in the form of postcards. Proud of that, white people? You mutilate them, terrorize them, defile them, and then send it as a postcard. That's something to be proud of, right? It's not enough. You took their pride and dignity and life. You have to. And yes, this is the past, but it's still going on today. Only thing it went from trees to guns. Don't tell me slavery doesn't exist and it doesn't matter. <coughs> Often in the fo photograph, the lynch victim was surrounded by the culprits who had carried out the sadistic act. So 
Usually they would lynch him, kill him, take pictures with him. Like it was a big party. You proud of that? They actually caught it at a lunch party. Now I'm going to move on to another section in this book. And here's the irony that I was talking about. They would lynch Hebrew Israelites for raping white women, some of which were probably innocent. But it was okay for the white man to do it to the Hebrew Israelites. How is that justice? Still proud white people? It was a common practice in America during the era, era of chattel slavery for white male slave owners to have sexual relations with their black female slaves. The female slave had little power over her labor as well as her body. Often, sexual intercourse was not a choice. Rape was quite prevalent, and the female who fought against the sexual advances of her master was often punished with physical abuse or deprived of certain privileges, as few as they were. This was also a method by which the masculinity of the male slave was dominated and crushed. The male slave was just as powerless as the female slave, incapable of protecting his wife, daughter, and mother without a threat to his own life. This debauchery of the female slave occurred even before these wives, daughters, and mothers. And I want you, white men, to think about your wives, your daughters, your mothers. And I want you, to, white women, to think about yourself, your mothers, your daughters. Everybody has a mother. was done before they reached the shores of America. John Newton, the famous slave trader turned clergyman and abolitionist, writes the following concerning rape on board slave ships. When the women and girls are taken on board, a ship naked, trembling, terrified, they are often exposed to wanton rudeness of white savages. In imagination, the prey is divided upon the spot and only reserved till opportunity offers. And the marriage of slaves wasn't even legally recognized. I'm off on page 39 now. This also occurred in a number of occasions as Israel was moved out of captivity in America, which is our focus. Children of slaves were sold at the financial impulse of the slave master. So when they needed money, they'd sell a child. Consequently, families were often torn apart. Many members never seen their loved ones again. In the work, Slavery and the Domestic Slave Trade in the United States, Professor Andrews' inquiry of a slave trader sheds light on verse 32. Andrews, do you buy the wife without the husband? Slave trader, Yes, very often, and frequently, too. They sell me the mother while they keep the children. I have often known them to take away the infant from its mother's breast and keep it 
while they sold her. In many instances, families were split for the purpose of establishing economic security for the children of slave owners, just as a trust fund would today. Still proud, white people? Still proud? And this goes into the prophets of the true Hebrew Israelites and what they would endure. The prophecies. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thy hand. That is Deuteronomy 28 and 32. So, this is just a small portion of what you're proud of. Of what your white forefathers, of what my white forefathers, I don't know my family history. But as people with this color skin that did it then, and they're still doing it today.